Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to cover the installation process of Pi-hole. I know this has been covered many times. Today, we're going to do something a little different. I manage my containers with portainer.io and uh, something that we're still working with. Uh, and so today, what we're going to do is we're going to install the Pi-hole on a Raspberry Pi. And to manage it with our portainer, we're going to use the portainer agent. And that will allow us to get access to the resources on that Raspberry Pi from our management server which hosts this portainer so with that we're going to get right into it and we're going to cover the installation process and we're going to also cover a few different things as to how i use pihole and why i use it so let's get right into it all right so first thing is first we're going to bring up our portainer and in here you're going to select on the left hand side um, the menu over here the administration menu you're going to select the environment related and then click on environments and then in here you're going to select this little blue button saying add environment and this will give us a few different options. We have Docker standalone, Docker Swarm, Podman, Kubernetes, uh, the, probably the main ones. And then there's something here with ACI, which I'm not too familiar with. But um, today we're going to stick with Docker standalone, although I do see some potential of us covering some of the other options in the future. So in this case, this will give us a pretty much a wizard and giving us the available um, methods that are available to us. So in this case, we have the agent API socket and the edge agent standard. Uh, so we're going to use this agent and what I did is I took this these commands So there's a Windows and Linux variation of that I took these commands and just ran it over to ChatGPT and asked it to create a docker compose file based on these commands here and um, And that's what I have now So next we're going to open up our Visual Studio code and SSH into our Raspberry Pi and put this docker compose file in there So let's do that now All right, so in this case I have I'm on my Raspberry Pi from our Visual Studio code and I had SSH into it and I had created a folder called Portainer Agent and I have a Docker dash compose file. And in there, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that um, code that I had grabbed from ChatGBT, just a Docker compose file based on the commands that the Portainer had provided. And th this should be good enough. Uh, we might run into some issues, but let's give it a shot. So in a PowerShell window, I had SSH into this machine or this Raspberry Pi, went into that folder, and now we have the Docker Compose file. So all we're going to do here is do Docker Compose up dash D, and that should allow us to bring it up, and it's going to pull in the image if we don't already have it. Uh, so I'm already seeing a problem with the version being obsolete, um, so it's going to be ignored, and please remove it to avoid potential confusion. So that 3.8 is obviously obsolete, but let's kind of see what, what kind of happens here. All right, so about after a minute or so, uh, after running Docker Compose up dash D, we now have, uh, it already had the image on the local machine and we um, have that Docker container started. So we run Docker PS, we should be able to see that container is up and running. So now let's head back into our portainer server. So what we're gonna have here is a name and an address. I'm just gonna name it Raspberry Pi or RPi dash test, and then the IP address is 192.168.1.51. And we're going to have to obviously specify the port. And that's going to be 9001, which we had defined um, in our Docker Compose file or the Docker command. And then we should be able to connect. So now if we head back into our environments, you can see we now have the RPi test. And then from this point, if you click on back on to the portainer.io, pretty much getting to the home screen as right when you log in, you're going to see under environments, we now have our local environment, which is on our local server. And then we have the RPI dash test, which is the environment that we had just defined. And then in here, we should see any containers or stacks that are running. In this case, we have that portainer agent that is currently running and um, the containers. So these are obsolete. And then we have the portainer agent dash test, which was what we are running right now. All right, so now that we are in here, um, we're in that test, we're going to go ahead and create a stack here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the PyHole documentation. And here we're going to get a Docker Compose file. And we're going to just literally simply grab this, go back into our portainer, and we're going to paste it right in there. Before deploying it, we're going to kind of look through it real quick, see if there's any changes that we need to make. Uh, so in this case, we got we're pulling the or we're naming it Pi-hole. We're pulling the latest Pi-hole image. We're going to define the DNS ports, which is obviously 53, both on TCP and UDP. We have HTTP and HTTPS, pretty straightforward. 
Uh, gives you some kind of notes here about the, if you're running a DC, DHCP server on your Pi Hole. In this case, I'm using my router. Otherwise, you would uncomment it and use these lines here. Uh, same thing for an NTP or network time protocol server. That'd be one, two, three. Not relevant on my case, at least for the time being. Uh, this is going to be something that we're going to change. Uh, you could go to this link here. In this case, I'm just going to be the East Coast for the time being. And then uh, we're just going to go ahead and proceed on with deploying. All right. And then the stack has been deployed. You will head over to the IP address with the port number and we should be able to hit our pie hole. But first, before doing so, I wanted to hit up, uh, just go back to this Docker Compose file. And in here uh, for this password, I kind of talked about it briefly, but go ahead and change this to a variable. So in this case, we're going to define a variable for an example. Let's go ahead and just say var one down here at the bottom. Just click on add an environment enver environment variable. Uh, you could also do this from from a file, but in this case, we'll just add it here and then just do var one. And then let's go ahead and just specify the password here. And that would be assigned to var one. And then that would be pulled in through here. And that's what you will log into your uh, pie hole with. All right. So let's go ahead and head over to that now. So what you are going to do is head over to that IP address of that Raspberry Pi or that server, wherever the pie hole is being installed. And in my case, it's going to be this dot 51 address. And then you have to specify with a forward slash admin, and that will get you to a login screen, login with the password that you had just defined in that Docker Compose file. And you should see the same screen that I am seeing right now. All right. So right off the bat, you have a few things to look at. Uh, in this case, you have some statistics up here at the top left or your status of the pie hole. Um, another thing to work that is worth noting is the domains on the list is 239,244 and that's by default. Now this could be all changed by going to the manage lists and then you could add additional lists here. Um, but in this case for now, this is just fine with the default. And then the main thing that I'm using it for, to be honest, uh, although this is quite useful is I go over to my settings and I use this as a DNS server. And um, down here at the bottom, you see an option for local DNS records. And I will go ahead and specify that in here. So right now we have a few things uh, in our in our home lab, right? So if I go back to the portainer and we go back to our home, you could cancel out of that. And we have our two environments right now in our RPI test. I just have the pie hole and the uh, uh, where am I at? The pie hole, uh, the portainer agent. But we also have in our local environment, we have three stacks, four containers that are kind of showing up here. Um, really, you don't have to look at the stacks, though, I guess. So in this case, we have an N8N stack. Uh, and in, in there, we have the traffic and the N8N um, container. And then we have the Dashi container. So if right now to get to Dashi, we have to go to the IP address. So I'll do that right now to show you. So 192.168.1.107 with port 4000. Obviously, that could get annoying. So that's the whole purpose of a DNS name to resolve an IP address to a name. So in this case, we could go in here and they had changed this interface. I haven't used it, I think, in about a year now, maybe six months to a year. Um, but I'm getting everything back up and running. And I'm also making the home lab more resistant to uh, just, you know, tearing it down. I want to be able to have it be more resilient. Uh, so in this case, you have the domain and then you have the associated IP address with that domain. So in this case, we're just going to do dashy dot local. And then we're going to specify the 192.168.1. Um, 107. No, nope. yep, seven. And we're going to click on add. So now we should have dashy dot local and should be able to resolve that um, IP address or that DNS name. But I have no plans to do that today because I am going to also set up a reverse proxy and that's going to allow us to get into these resources uh, in addition to using a DNS name, but it also get us into that uh, specific port number. So we could tie this dashy dot local and point it towards our reverse proxy. And then if it hits dashy dot local and the reverse proxy sees it, it'll allow us into that port 4000. Otherwise, right now, as it stands, you would have to do dashy dot local and then specify the port number, which is not something that we are looking to do. So for this video, that's going to close out pretty much what I'm going after. Now, I might cover this pie hole more in depth at a later date, but I think YouTube already does a great job of that. There's plenty of resources available that uh, kind of cover the different domains, 
the lists that are available to you and adding additional lists. Um, but this is something that we could definitely do in the future. But by default, if you want everything uh, on, go ahead and just select the um, what I just did there. This will go ahead and disable blocking, enable blocking. So this should be uh, pretty straightforward. So as you can see, if once we block it, it'll say blocking disabled. And then we go ahead and do enabled. Uh, and then you get your statistic appear depending on uh, what domains and stuff that you hit. In this case, I do not have my computer tied to this DNS server. So we would not be able to resolve that DNS name and we would also not get any of the benefits. Um, but this is something that I'm going to tie up in another video. So that's going to close out today's video. I guess I will add that uh, after you get up PyHole running, because I kind of briefly just mentioned that, you're going to still need to get our your your computer or your home network through this PyHole if you want to get benefits of the blocking or if you want to use that DNS server, which I had just talked about. So to do that, you could either do it through your router. Um, so just log into your router, whether that be like 192.168.1.1, log into there and specify your DNS server for your entire network. Now, I would be careful with that because if you make any mistakes or if this DNS server or Raspberry Pi gets turned off, you will not be able to connect or resolve any other um, DNS names. So in that case, it might be worthwhile doing it on a test case. Uh, so in my case, I'm just going to do it on my own personal computer. So I'm not f affecting anybody else in the house um, or anybody that comes over and visits until I get something maybe more resilient. Uh, obviously, there's options like an additional uh, Raspberry Pi that spun up a high availability and um, replicating between one, in one another and also some like reporting. But in this case, uh, for the time being, I'm just going to spin it up and then connect it to my own computer that I only use. So this way it only impacts me. And maybe I'll probably use it as a secondary server. So I still have access to another DNS server. Um, but all of this could be talked about in another video. But it's just worth noting that if you do install PyHole, which is, might be one of the reasons why you're watching this video, you do have to do that, make those settings. And it's pretty easy um, to do so. Otherwise, that's going to close out today's video. I hope you were able to take something away. In this video, we covered the installation process of the PyHole using Portainer stacks. Uh, we had a defined the Portainer stack on a external server. So in this case, it was a Raspberry Pi and we had installed Portainer agent to now manage those resources. And now we could access it from our management server from Portainer.io. And that's going to close out today's video. I hope you were able to take something away. And as always, never stop learning.